I'm just going to go live and I'm going to do my little spiel while you are all uh, nicely filling that out. Okay. Uh, welcome to Painting the Artist Within Connections. Um, this is our acrylics class, our expressive acrylics class where you find your own voice at the Ocean County Artists Guild. Um, so I want to welcome you all. And yes, we are broadcasting live from the Ocean County Artists Guild in beautiful Island Heights, New Jersey. Our website is www.ocartistguild.org. You can find us there on the web. Our mailing address is 22 Chestnut Avenue, Post Office Box 1156, Island Heights, New Jersey. If you'd like to contact us by phone, the number is 732-270-3111. Or you can email us for more information going to, using the email address, info at ocartistguild.org. This program is brought to you in part by the New Jersey State Council on the Arts in association with the Ocean County Cultural and Heritage Commission. That being said, we will get to our presentation here. I have a slide presentation that I'm going to go through first. We're going to do some introductions. There we go. Hopefully this will go through. Okay. I can present this. I'm going to check back on the live stream to make sure it gets up there. Uh, da -da. There's a little bit of a lag in time. Okay, so good. It's going. See it. Great. Wonderful. Hopefully, hear us. I think I'm going to escape out of this for a sec. To be sure. that we can be heard. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to be heard. If not, well, it is what it is. Great. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start by introducing um, myself. My name is Kim Cesaretti. Um, I teach a few classes here. Uh, I am a certified art teacher. I am a former graphics artist. I worked for the Navy for 16 years. Um, while I was uh, employed by the Navy, I also uh, was an adjunct instructor at Georgian Court University. I taught web design graphics. When my kids got I had children, left those jobs. When my kids got older, I decided to go back to my first love, which was fine art, painting and drawing. And after focusing on my own fine art, uh, it brought me to opportunities to teach. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here before you uh, tonight. And I have a special place in my heart for beginners and any artist who wants to paint, draw, or walk to the beat of their own drum. Um, my philosophy is to meet you where you are and to nurture you in your art journey to help you realize your dreams for your art or whatever your goals might be. So I would like to start by getting to know, uh, getting to know you better. Um, our student who can't be present with us might not know so it would be nice to hear that. Um, 
So the first question I'd like to know is number one, how'd you hear about this class? What made you decide to take this class? Uh, what's your previous art experience? Let's see. There we go. What's your previous art experience? Medium classes taken. What level you consider yourself to have achieved, your preferences, and also, of course, what's your dream for your art? What goals do you have for your art? And what do you hope to learn or improve on in this class? Does anyone like to start? <laughs> oh, you know what? Go ahead. Yay. <laughs> Um, I have yes. um, currently teaching art. I teach art to teach group for two in Berkeley Um, I've been teaching for 12 years, although at the end of the year, I was going to teach for two years. Um, and I've been teaching for 12 years, although at many different schools, my husband was um, in the post room currently. I worked for a while, I didn't work for a long time, and for the last five years, I've been teaching for five years to land back in the local elementary uh, art class. I mean, I do love the program. Other than, and I have taken one of Kim's classes before, I was going to teach her one of her summer classes with the freshman students in Chicago. This is my fourth class at the Guild. I have three kids. I find trouble finding any time to create my own stuff. So the class has helped me to find time. Um, I mostly go to photography because that's something that I can find more, you know, easy time for. Um, and I'm just excited. Wonderful. I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, no. Wonderful. Thank you. And and April was a breath breath of fresh air in my class as well. I really appreciated having her, and I love the fact that you're a teacher and that you are you know, trying to also make time for your own art because that's extremely difficult to do when you're a teacher or you have a full-time job of, it, of any kind. So that's just, that's great. I absolutely love that. Oh, here, so, all right, so now, um, now we can see the rest of the class. I'm using my, my little phone here as a web camera. Okay, <laughs> I have multiple things going on here. Okay, uh, so now we have Anne. Okay. Um, I heard okay. about the class just from my husband's family from Island Heights, the Dryad Five, and oh. I also took um, the five figure drawing. Um, mm. I'm not, which I have no idea what I'm doing. I should want to not even. Anyway, but like you I'm here. The whole or you mean drop in? The drop in. Oh, okay. The drop in where I had no idea what I was. Oh, doing. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, I've taken art classes off and on through kind of for like many years. It, um, I prefer oil painting just because acrylics, I get really frustrated with because okay. I don't think I'm fast enough for acrylics or, oh. yeah, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and so I have trouble blending and um, because I want to be able to move it around, like you can move oils around and, yeah, yeah. anyway, so that's one of my goals, <laughs> yeah. but and you were going to say. Well, um, I, I just wanted to um, to inform you of the, that there are new acrylic products on the market that have extenders in them, I, so I, that you have yeah. more time and don't yeah. have to feel so rushed. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have those with me today, but I do have some blending medium that has okay. extender in it that can be, and I think I might have just pure extender that can be added to acrylics too. But it can be interesting to just you know appreciate that type of get the experience working yeah. really fast because it you know it could it's actually kind of very liberating but go ahead yeah no i mean we, yes so that's something i'm looking forward to and one of my goals is to um i was doing most recently during lockdown i took some uh virtual classes through asl they um the art students league oh out of new york it was oh wow yeah but um, and I, it's acrylic, and it, so it wasn't exactly technique instruction. Okay. It was more like discussing painting, like the the different techniques that different painted art artists use, and then okay. you paint on your own, and then you show here and get feedback. So. Okay. And that was abstract. 
Um, have no idea what I'm doing with that, Jack. So I thought this um, <laughs> this class would help me connect a little bit more with that. Right. Well, that would be our goal because this is a little bit of a twist. Um, we we start out without with very loose intentions, and I kind of try to lead you to sort of crystallizing it a little bit more, but in your own way, not my yeah. way. Yeah, I just need to loosen up and lighten it up. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, that, that's just, that's great. And, um, okay, so you took, uh, what was Art Students League? Any yeah. any prior classes before that? Yeah, um, I was living in Florida, so I took classes through, I took a couple of college classes in drawing mm -hmm. and some uh, painting, and then also um, the Art Museum had offered classes. So oh, it's nice. been like sporadic throughout. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. No formal like technique and color-shaded classes, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those are. Well, they're fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drawing classes, yes, yeah. technique and drawing, yeah. but not painting. Yeah. Great. Um, are you, do you uh, work during the day or? Okay. I'm, clean. I'm, a, I'm an educator as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I actually taught yeah. one year of middle school art, but I'm more um, primarily um, elementary, lower elementary. Great. Yeah. And April, that's what you you're you're I'm elementary, for, right? Yeah, yeah, we were we were we were just we were painting um, pumpkins with pool noodles. Yeah. Pool <laughs> noodles. <laughs> we cut them in little tiny pieces, and then it's like print making for you know six year olds. Oh yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and he and he signs the cardboard too. He was so proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome. Are you a member of the guild right now, or no? I haven't. Like, I haven't paid. Oh, that's okay. I mean, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just curious. Yes. Um. <laughs> and I have. I mean, I wouldn't know what I would consider myself as far as level. I mean, I haven't shown ever or anything like that. You know, oh. I don't know that I have anything worthy of showing. So. Well, how do you? How would you describe your own personal style? Let's let's maybe. Expand um, on that. I don't know. Do you, would you say are you a realist? Are you an impressionist? I, or um, I think probably being I'm very detail oriented, so that's what kind of breaks free up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna help you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the yeah. 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 That's that's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anne, and yeah. welcome. And now we have my wonderful friend, Joyce. <laughs> and Joyce and, and Anne-Marie. I would be asking the That's that's really really huge because I think for for quite a while I don't th like I I appreciate your approach to art and I always thought even from the beginning that there's this playful side there's this playful person inside of you that that really wants to come out but you but you've been restrained a little bit or you've restrained yourself and, and haven't haven't really let loose maybe because of and you know we think we should do this or we should do that instead of 
sometimes instead of what we really, really feel or what really, like, what our passion is or what really drives us, right? Like, we can get caught up in that. So um, I love everything that Joyce does is very fun and very playful and it looks very cheerful and it totally reflects her and her personality. And I'm so happy that you have started, that I've seen you start to embrace that and, and take that and run with it. I, I really love that. Joyce also is our Joyce for Jerry and Jerry. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Okay, right. have one why not we got to put ourselves out there have the courage yeah, to I do that I, I, said I, would do that. I don't have work for that yet. is that the February job yeah you 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 can get there all right I'm gonna get there yeah <laughs> okay yes do it I say if do you it. ever saw some of my original my first paintings Oh, good. They were that bad. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> to come in three years, I think she had the confidence to enter a show with Tim's backing and support. Yeah. Awesome. Anne Marie. Now, Anne Marie is a woman of many hats. Yes, I am. She is our president, and she does oh. lots for for the guild here. So. My name is Anne Marie, <laughs> and um, that is a good description. Many hats. So, um, um, I have two careers right now, and then volunteer here as president. It will be my third year as president to take a year off um, and to be a team. And um, during the day, I'm at Not yet, but we're working on it, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm working on it for my school too. Oh, are you? <laughs> oh, cool. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And we're gonna switch to we're gonna switch back to our little slideshow. Oh, okay. So I actually. Before we get to this, what I'd like to do is I'm going to skip forward because we're going to do some prep. We're going to do some preparation because I want the paper to have time to dry. Uh, 
for when we're ready to start painting it. The, the, what we're going to do is we're going to put coats of gesso on paper, on watercolor paper. And we're, you're going to gesso a small sheet and a large sheet. We're only going to use the small sheet tonight, okay? The other sheet you're going to take back with you and bring it back next week, and we're going to start, you know, so that's ready to go. And that's... I'll remind you about that later. Um, <clears throat> but okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to and What you wanted us to do your slide? slide presentation oh the on oh I don't know it's whatever came with the TV it's just well, I, yeah so I'm getting out of the presentation All right, sorry. All right. All right, I'm going to move this. I'm actually going to move it over here. So my goal here. Okay. Actually, I need to move this over. Sorry for the ruckus. Isn't that a ruckus? <laughs> this is nothing. This is going to be loud. I just want to get it closer. I mean, I could zoom in, but the zoom never really worked as well as just doing it. I think you can see well right now. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
pretty good for what I need to do. All right. All right, so I could put it on here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a big brush. Yeah, I got pictures. I'm reading your list ahead. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, but it's mainly for cleanup. We don't really want to um, use water. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit to bring the brush over here later? Yeah. Um, yeah, we should have them at the table then. Right. Oh, this is what I want. I like to work with uh, small ones first. And uh, basically what I'm doing. Alright. So I like to just pour some on. Okay. And I'm gonna take this big brush and you just want to put, you know, just a thin coat. The reason why I'm putting this on the paper, the watercolor paper, I like the watercolor paper because it's nice and thick and it's cheap, it's not, you know, it's not precious. Uh, but I put the gesso on it so that it's not as porous and it doesn't soak up a lot of the acrylic paint when we're ready to work on it. So it gives it, you know, a more slick, uh, it seals the paper more and it creates a more slick surface so that we can move paint around easier without it all soaking up into the paper. So don't be afraid to make a mess because this is all about mess right here. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. And get these two, and I have a big brush. No, I'm not going to keep the paper because. You know, our goal isn't necessarily to make this really smooth painting anyway without a to get a decent amount. And I'm not mixing it with water. The reason why I'm not mixing the gesso with water, you can thin gesso out with water, but if you do on the paper, it'll make the paper buckle more because it'll saturate the paper more. If you don't do that, then your paper will stay flatter and it won't buckle. Right? I'm going to take this. Now, you also, these are paper palettes. You can um, you know, put, you can put gesso, a blob of gesso on there or on a paper plate. I just find that it takes me a lot less time and there's a lot less waste when I just, you know, put it on the paper. I don't really need that. All right. So I'm going to do these two pieces of paper. I should give you guys some brushes and then we can get started working and then I'll just work on these two little ones. So while we get started, I'll turn around and I'll get more. I have a big tub over there. Um, Because a lot, I had a lot of talking that I want to do, I figured let's get this done. This way our paper should be, the small paper will be pretty dry for us to get started. The larger paper will take longer, but it should be pretty good to go to be able to take home safely without worrying about getting stuff all over your car. <laughs> well, there's the method to that. I'm sorry, what? 
another one right there. Yeah, and then we're going to go right over to when you're done with that, let me know, and I'll, you know, you can. Okay. this deck over there. Yeah, that's a I'm okay with it. In fact, I might need to open up that that big card that I just saw. Yeah, it feels like we're there. Yeah, let me open this. Let me get a big sheet. You want me to take this one? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought I did give you one. I did. Yeah. Oh. I, that's why I had the extra one. I didn't give you yours. All right, this is sitting upside down and doing its thing. All right. Yes, when you're done with them, yes, please rinse them out right away, wash them out with soap, otherwise if it gets dried in there, it's going to ruin, yeah. ruin the bug. Did you use regular dish soap on these, or? Yeah, dish soap is fine. It works. We can use them to paint with, but you're going to be painting on a smaller piece of paper, so you might not oh, want to yeah. use a brush that big. But um, you will be free to use these on the big paper. Actually, I have this whole bag of goodies over there. Oh, fun. Okay. We're going to have all different kinds of stuff to work with. Yeah. 
yeah. household items, non-traditional tools uh, that we're going to have some experience playing with throughout this process, which is always fun. My favorite part. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, until a couple years ago, I was I strictly used the tools that you're supposed to use. I never really, never really got outside of that box before. But oh my gosh, once you get out of that box, you never want to get back in it. It's just so much fun to find all these different fun things to paint with. You know, to either find around your house or dollar store or. Like, I need to have my act together because I'm still doing that. Let's get the bottle. I'm going to do one more for one more of these large sheets for our student who can't be here. So that she's ready to go next time with the rest of us. And I think we may have discussed this before I came in, Tim, but I think this says six weeks, and I think there's like eight or nine weeks over the calendar. Are there days that we don't have this? Yes, next I week, do. Right? You know, is that right? It's either next week or the week after. Okay. I have to. I'll have to go I'm always the calendar lady, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I'm glad you're the calendar lady because sometimes I don't you know, I don't touch everything that I'm supposed to. So I'm gonna get one more piece of paper. Here. I feel like that's all I do is everything like that. I have turned into the same thing. Doing the same yeah. They're already in this. Oh, okay. It'll dry on there. I, it, 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 you could just wipe off, you know, like wipe what's wet. I'll put my sleeves in it. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you feel you need to do so you don't get it on you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't really care about the table clothes, though. That's why they're there. We, we expect them to be dirty.
Okay, so we're going to leave this dry while we focus on our presentation. So there it is. There's our papers. The two small ones. Okay. All right. Okay. We will switch. Okay, all right, so let's go back. Okay. All right, so what, what I like to do in, in a class like this is because, you know, we, we get, we talk about a lot of, um, it, it's, it's what I would call inner work, right? Inner work. Um, we try to get over a lot of the um, blocks or limiting beliefs that we have about what we can or can't do with our art. Um, so for that reason, I have this little agreement that I ask of everyone that while you're embarking on your art journey, that you open up your heart and your mind, let go of expectations, Focus on process over product, um, not hide, you know, be willing to share and show your work. Uh, let go of limiting beliefs about my own art and art as a whole. Uh, focus on the play and the joy, adopt the spirit of lifelong learning. And the teachers here know what, what that means, right? Uh, be kind to myself. Let go of negative thoughts, not compare and despair, and to paint and create and like nobody's looking. Okay. Um, we'll go into more detail about what those things entail. But, but I just wanted to read to you this little introduction. Now, I, I created this, the theme for this class is connections. And... The reason why I wanted to focus, or I wanted this as a focus, is because 
you know, connections are what make us feel basically connected to our art and, and whatever we do. We want to feel connected to it. We want to feel like it's special and not and unique and not something that can be replicated by anyone else. And connections come in many forms. We're connected to many people, places, things, and ideas in our lives. We're also connected to ourselves, our inner selves. Our lives are marked by these connections and associations in such deep ways. Reflecting on the deep connections we have can be a, can be a creative source of inspiration for our art. Some may be positive, others negative. All connections offer us clues to the meaning and purpose of our lives, what touches us, what influence us, influences us, and how we think and look at the world. Our connections contribute to our feeling of being part of something greater and bigger than ourselves. They contribute to our sense of self and help form our personality and worldview. Connections enrich our lives. Connections are highly personal. In this class series, we look for ways to bring the inside out and find our voice. We strive to sing our visual song and share it with the world, a song written through the lens of our own experiences. Connections offer us a wealth of inspiration. We can tap into thoughts, into the thoughts and feelings related to our deep connections. The visual language of our connections can be expressed through color, mark making, and all the other principles and elements of art. It makes it possible for us to reach others through a two-dimensional surface to, to provide a deep, engaging, emotive, and thought-provoking experience. It helps us to feel truly seen, understood, and included through the newly created connection between the work's creator and the viewer. In other words, you have a voice and the world needs to hear it. The world needs to hear it. They need to see it through your, through your work. And there's an audience for all types of work. I became particularly interested in connections, I think more so during uh, the pandemic when we were locked up. And, you know, it, it makes you, it makes you really think about what's important and makes you reflect on those connections in your life that are important to you. What, what's, what's most important? Uh, you know, with the noise of our everyday lives, sometimes we can feel disconnected from ourselves. And when we finally get that quiet time where, you know, or that time when the world stopped and we all had to stop and we all had more time to be reflective. It, it was a great time to try to connect with, you know, with our inner selves. Um, it also, you know, helped us think about, you know, our relationships with the people who are closest to us that live with us, that we had to spend more time with too, right? Um, you know, it m may have made us think of other connections that we have that maybe we didn't spend enough time on that we might as a result of that want, want to nurture. Uh, we're also connected to our memories and we have memories of certain people and places and things. And uh, these are the elements and principles of design. It's just a nice little chart to help us as we go through our journey uh, and how you know we can use all those elements and principles of design in order to express the connection that we want to convey to the viewer in our work. We can take advantage of all of these elements. We're gonna start with color. We'll, we'll start with color. So we got preparation. Okay, we, we gessoed our nine by 12 paper and our 18 by 24 inch paper, and we're letting that dry. So what, now, in our last class, I, I believe I asked the class, we started with a writing assignment, actually, which you might think, oh, well, I didn't come here to write, I came here to paint, right? But, um, but the writing assignment, I think, was crucial to, and, and the reflection that goes into the writing was really, really effective at helping us get to 
uh, the heart of what we wanted to express because, you know, it, it slowed down our thinking and it really made us, uh, helped us focus and hone in on that. So the first step in our connections journey is to complete like a series of journaling prompts. If you dislike writing, you're welcome to answer the prompts in pictures. You can do pictures and doodles to answer. If that's if that works better for you, you don't have to necessarily do any kind of long prose thing. It could be bullets, it could be a list, it could be whatever. I'm not going to dictate whatever that is. It's not for me, it's for you. It's for, it's for you to be able to look back on and, and reflect. So there is a list of five items. I invite you to just skim through the five items, but for, for tonight, just pick the two, maybe one or two that resonate the most with you and focus on that. The rest of the items you can do on your own in between this class and the next class that, that we meet. Because I didn't want us to spend too much time on that, but just enough to accomplish what we would like to accomplish for, for this evening. So I'm just going to run through the prompts and you can, you know, something might come to you that, that really stands out that you feel like, oh, that's a connection I really want. I really feel like strongly about that. I really, I really want to express in a painting. Uh, name a person that you feel deeply connected to. It could be living, the person could be living or in memoriam. How do you feel about this person? Describe your relationship. Why do you feel the way you do about this individual? What else do you associate with this person? A place, an object, or objects, an experience, an event, a memory, a sound, a smell, a tradition, etc. Could be any number of things. Uh, the second prompt deals with places. Name a place that you feel deeply connected to. What do you think of or associate with this place? When were you in this place? What happened when you were there? Who was there? What did you see, do, or hear in this place? How did you feel while you were there? Why did you go there? How did you get there? You may, some, some of the questions may apply, some might not. It's just designed to help get your thoughts out. Just thought-provoking questions is all they are. Uh, things, name a thing you feel deeply connected to. Is it an animate lip? Is it an animate living thing or an inanimate object? Uh, why are you drawn to it? What memories do you associate with this thing? Where did you get it? How did it come, how did it come into your possession? Who gave it to you? If it's a living thing, what was is your relationship to your relationship to it? How did it behave? What activities or experiences do you associate with it? Do you still have it? If so, where is it? If not, what happened to it? What did it look like? What did it feel like? What did it sound like? Uh, the fourth is ideas. Is there an idea or a recurring thought or theme in your life that you feel connected to? What is that? What does it mean to you? Is anyone else associated with this idea or recurring thought? Who is it? What role do they play? How do you feel about this idea? And does it feel negative, positive, neutral? It's all different kinds of ideas. And the last one is emotions, emotional connection. Is there a particular emotion that figures prominently in your life right now? Why do you think you're feeling this way? Is this feeling connected to a particular person, place, or thing? And just describe the connection. So, you know, you can feel free to write it on this paper. I have extra paper there. Um, pick one or two and just, you know, jot down some thoughts and feelings about this particular connection. And, you know, you're not, you don't have to share any of this. Okay. This is completely personal to you. No, we really don't. That's going to come, that will come through the act of doing the project. <laughs> and that will be for us to uh, look at and appreciate and, and, you know, react to all as well. I'll be right back. Well, you guys are writing.
just, you know, things being connected. It doesn't. Now, and if you're catching this either live or by replay, um, if you're a registered student for this class, you have a link to the actual presentation where all the material is that I've just presented with regard to all the uh, emotions. Uh, if this material or this class interests you and you're not geographically close to us and you'd like to join us remotely, uh, you can click on the link in the description of the video and register for the class through the Ocean County Artist Guild.
Wow.
Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I have to share with you. Uh, I can see what I'm um, doing. For those of you that are done, um, can you just share how you feel about doing the, having this experience of, of writing like this? Like, what, what's your reaction to it, just in general? Not you don't have to share what your thoughts or feelings are. What, maybe maybe just let me know which category did you pick, and how did you feel about the, the whole writing experience or, around the assignment? I've never been writing. I've never been on a blackboard. Um, I think the first one is great. Cool. I find, like, this, like, as soon as it's set for a bit of place, it's like, you know, immediately you got everything going through the questions, you start to, like, certain words or certain things come to mind that mm. you don't think about when you immediately think about. And that's just like overwhelming finding something. Yeah. I would say I like what you just said about words because what I want to add to this is that um, even though this is an acrylic painting class, if you, if certain words do come up for you through the writing, you can include the words in your painting too if it makes sense to do that. If it adds to what you're trying to convey in your painting too. So I that you saying that helped me bring forth that that instruction too. Only because I'm mentioning it to you now because if between now and the next time, you know, we paint, I mean, because we're gonna be painting, you know, we'll be paint be painting every week, um, you know, that we're together and doing, you know, more than one painting. But just uh it, it, we'll just keep evolving. The idea will keep Evolving, you you might decide, you know, we might be doing more than one particular connection. It, we're not necessarily sticking with one. When you're done with it, you'll know. And you'll if you're ready, if you want to, if you want to take that that one connection further, you can. You have you'll have that option. But if you're done with it, you can pick another one, and and we can we can uh, work on a piece. Uh, that shows the, you know, the next connection that you want to uh, express in, in your work. So we, there's a lot of flexibility here in this class. Um, but you can start collecting words. Sometimes, so, you know, those funny coincidences happen. You'll be thinking about this word, and then you might look through a newspaper or a magazine, and you might actually see that printed word. Mm -hmm. So just keep it in the back of your mind, because maybe you want to cut it out. And the same thing goes for certain textures or fabrics or some other things that evoke particular memories that are related to connections. Any kind of found object that can be incorporated into uh, the two-dimensional surface of a painting, be open to uh, using things like that as well in, in your work. There will be a way for us to glue it there if, if it works, you know, if it works. So, thanks, April. And Anne? Um, I, I really, I can see where we're the connection. Like, I'm trying to see the direction we'll take. Um, because I think it helps me to just kind of live in the emotions that we're using the connection, you know, in that moment to be like really present with it. Yeah. Um, and I found myself Leaning more towards um, just writing words and then phrases more poetic. Okay. Approach. That's cool. That's cool. So, That's great. Yeah. Uh, maybe, um, yeah. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, 
Um, we want the emotion that you feel about right now, um, a person, and a place. Wonderful. Thanks. Oh, so you have a wealth of, of uh, stuff to, to draw on. Yeah, I don't have to see up the left yellow, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all coming out in here. It's going to be for all of us to see. <laughs> you get to keep it. You, you reveal as much as you, <laughs> as you like. <laughs> Joyce! <laughs> How did you feel about this? Everybody has their own language, visual language, right? We all think of things differently, which is so beautiful. That's going to come out in your paintings. That's so exciting. <laughs> Thank you, guys. 
Thank you. Oh. So. Great. Yeah, so I went and told them we can, and he was like, holy cow, I'm not connected to anything. <laughs> it's really happened, I tell you, when I think I'm going to just use the arm, I'm like, I have nothing. I hope that's like my heel too. I'm like, I have nothing. So the writing really helps. Because that was like, wait a minute. And then once they saw me writing about it. So I did place and thing. Mm -hmm. um, and word, one of the words that I underlined out of the place was that it was where the clock wasn't ticking, and that like instantly mm -hmm. gave me a visual of if the clock. It was it was probably one of the only places I felt like there wasn't a clock, and you have to look at the time. Wow. And then the thing it ended up circling back to a person, so I didn't like the person freaked me out the most, and so it was interesting that it. Well, this is very interesting that the thing that I chose were these wind chimes from my dad, and um, there's been connections, disconnection, connections without. And it's very interesting because I said, you know, when I was a Christmas present, we did wind chimes in the winter. You don't plan wind chimes in the winter. So, like, I used to bring them out and take them back to the tangled, like, it's very symbolic <laughs> to the whole relationship. That's very really interesting. I realized that, like, Pretty cool. Really That's some pretty cool imagery, though. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all for sharing that. The next step here is... Oh, what happened here? Where's my... Duh. All right. No, that's not it. Where's my presentation? All right. There we go. Okay, now we're back. Where's this? Oh, I forgot to write it in here. So I did forget to write it. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't add it to here, but I had it in a separate document. Okay. All right, so here's the assignment. The assignment is to use, we're going to use that small piece of paper. This is going to be something quick. Like, we're, we're only here till 8.30, but it's going to be probably more than enough time to do this little quick thing that I want us to do. Because I don't really want you to spend more than a half an hour on it. Because if if you do, then you're gonna get too thinky with it and it's, you know, it, it, the less time the better. I want you to, okay, you pick your connection, your chosen connection that you're gonna focus on. And what I want you to think about, because we're gonna focus on color, what colors do you associate with this connection? And they don't, it doesn't have to be, they don't have to be realistic colors. The colors can be more like reflective of the emotion you feel about this connection. Okay, so I want you to just think about that for a minute or two about what, you know, the emotions you feel about this connection what colors resonate with you that that are that you feel really express the way you feel about that connection? And I would say pick two or three colors. We're going to pick two or three colors plus black and white, and you're going to be able to pick whatever tools you want to create just an abstract expression of your feelings about this connection. And this is just to help you focus more on color and, and using color as a way to express. I'm on the sub list, so they keep calling. <laughs> Read the thing that keeps going through my phone. Sorry about that. 
<laughs> Lazy. Yeah, they are. Uh, oh, this one is ESOP. They have the ESOP system. Yeah. And there's the Jobulator app that you can get for your phone, and that's that's what it. Where where do you where? Yeah. What do you think, Joyce? Oh, talking about the sub list. You're not interested in that, Joyce. <laughs> Are you? You want a sub? <laughs> a sub in the school? <laughs> Okay, so that's one thing I need to add. I need to add, go to my document and add that, add another slide. So we can do that. Okay. So, um, but before, I want to get to the ones. Thank 
level. Uh, no, I absolutely don't care. <laughs> okay. I just need to find where I wrote the assignment. Here we go. There we go. All right. It was up there. For some reason, it just wasn't changing. Okay. Expressive use of color. That's what we're after. Expressive use of color is what our uh, assignment is. Okay. Uh, that's the title. Personal expression through color. Personal reflection, which we've already done. We've set an intention. We're going to express our feelings about our connection using color. Uh, and that leads to us getting some experience with discernment with regard to our color choices. And because we're going to be uh, loose, non-objective, non-representational to the greatest extent we will allow ourselves, we're going to help you loosen up with your paint application. And the limitations that we're posing here are... It's just color, which are the chosen colors that you picked or to uh, that reflect how you're feeling, and you know the time there and the time restriction. And believe it or not, those two just having those two limitations it can open up a whole world of possibility for you. Limitations are powerful; they really are. I find that it it leads to having better results. It's better, I'm letting you use whatever like materials to apply the paint with, you're free to do that, but, um, and that's where there's the creativity, a lot of the creativity will be too. So we have our non by 12 paper, that's gessoed. You know, we have, you have access to brushes, palette knives, knives, and the other tools that I showed you. Uh, you know, you need containers of water, paper towels, and your chosen acrylic paints. So again, we picked one of the connections that you wrote or reflected on from the assignment, the first assignment. 
what colors we thought about what colors came to mind that feel like that connection. And now we are going to use those colors that we chose, plus black and white, if you, you know, if you so choose, to create a painting that reflects your feelings about your chosen connection. And I, again, I really want you to allow yourself to work freely and loosely. And again, you know, we have, you know, the remainder of the class to work on it. And that's it. We'll do a quick share and tell when you're when you guys are done playing.
cool to see the different uh, tool choices that we have here. Yes. <laughs> I happen to love this particular one and like thanks to Joyce hairbrush. for bringing that in. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like yeah. a baby's hairbrush. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. It is really cool to paint with. Wow. Nice texture there. Oh, I love like it's capturing like, the emotion I have in mind. <laughs> Well, let's uh, always change that up, you know. Yeah. Hmm? Well, that's an easy fix, though. But, you know, like I said, you don't have to... You don't have to go completely representational here, unless. Yeah, because we just want to loosen up. So I'll loosen up and have a little fun.
you something. Have they used that wet tablet? A quick tip. Go. Oh, okay. But, um, what do you need? Something in addition? No. I just need, oh, I have my scan of three more times. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you write the number of your school. And what number is that? I need a bubble in there. Tracing paper, bring your bring your leftover paint over. Okay. And they're gonna have fun with this. Is that all of us bring them? Yeah, you actually can if you if you yep. Um so we have some leftover paint show you something that you can do with your leftover paint. That's fun to do. You can kind of see it. Where do I put that right? Okay. After it dries, you can use it as a scrap piece and use it as collage paper for your painting. Oh. So it gives you another way to use your, your leftover paint uh, for your work. So let's just put it in the way. And I like just using the wedge because it really spreads it nice. And you know, you can spread it thicker or thinner. It's better than using a brush because, you know, the brush just kind of mars the surface of the paper, whereas like the silicone wedge it just simply spreads it without. So maybe we can do it like in the cake decorating section of the wedges. Well, these are like the catalyst wedges are actually artist wedges, oh. but. You can use, you know, a silicone kitchen scraper. Uh -huh. The other, the harder shapes that I have, the harder wedge shapes, those are actual, th those are cake decorating tools. They okay. They're for, you know, like pasta and stuff. So I could do, oh, I could do So one. use a fat white and perhaps to mix up a, a light blue or something so it's something we don't, I don't. Well, maybe I would use a little white if I wanted some negative space put back in, right? Yeah, you could always use some, some okay. white. So, so this is a good, good way to save a paint for future use. And just the act of spraying the paint with the wedge is fun. <laughs> And I'm living with my color choice for my connection. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm using my connection colors right now. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of setting it up to have them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this is a way if you mix colors, then this is you know, uh -huh. you can you can cut them out as swatches. You can also uh, in a if you have a sketchbook, a multimedia sketchbook, you can. If you have a particular color palette that you've made, you can, uh, you know, paint blobs in there too. That always works anyway. So I'm going to try to put this back on here. Tracing paper. You can, you can probably put it on kitchen parchment too. But what I find Parchment is because of the silicone on the surface. Now it doesn't like it. It won't stick. But what? I, but if you put it on thick enough, you can peel that thing off and stick it. That's a whole Ooh, other. I would like to possibly play with that a little bit too, and that that can be fun. All right. That, I forgot to fold everything out. That was a good thing to do. We're not going to use that. Then, by all means, we can save that too. You know, it, this is cool. So, no, we don't. Oh, 
least not one night. Mm -hmm. right? Morning, um, right. I mean, you're spending money on the paper. Why isn't it so cool? Mm -hmm. Then you'll have pictures of, uh, of collage paper that are home made with the colors on it that you use. Okay. So, homemade collage paper is better than any kind of cardboard collage paper. And let's take this floppy blue and see what that does. Trash can. <laughs> you could actually put it on any thin piece of paper, though. Uh, they have like wet tissue, tissue paper that can take wet, but I, I haven't found any. Maybe the art teachers know a source for that stuff. What is the process? It's like wet uh, tissue paper that can take wet media. Hmm. Do you have any idea? I have. Really? Yeah. Is it like standard tissue paper? Is it colored? Uh, Oh, yeah, because it's got color. Yeah. 
I want to have another
So that's it for tonight. Um, the homework assignment is in the presentation. If you have any questions, you can email or text me, let me know. But that's it until next time. Thank you. Bye.